Hi, uh, welcome to uh, a new series of uh, tutorials that we're going to start today. Uh, and these are going to introduce the Microsoft Project, uh, project Management Software. Uh, I think it's a, a great little tool. I've been using it for a lot of years uh, on a variety of projects, whether it's a complex construction project uh, or you know a simple academic uh, research project. Uh, where you need to keep track uh, of uh, activities and the resources required to execute those activities, maybe costs associated with them. Uh, there's a lot of power in Microsoft Project and, and it's a great tool uh, to, to use as you manage the projects in your life and certainly as you, if and when you ever become a project manager itself, uh, can be a great tool uh, to support you in your primary job. It's a uh, evolving uh, environment. Uh, they, they've done a, a lot with it over the years uh, and they've made some significant changes to it even this year. So I'm working on uh, version 2019 right here, a uh, fairly standard standalone uh, installation of it. And what I hope to do this morning in just a few minutes is sort of cover the, the fundamentals of the environment itself. We're not going to start entering data or anything else. We're just going to look at the environment itself, get you familiar with it, and then we're going to be able to come back for our first uh, uh, project where we're going to look at the environment itself and make sure that it is set up to display the information that we're putting in in a way that's going to make sense for us and then save that as a template. So that's coming up. Uh, but for now, let's have a, a quick look at what we have and in just a few minutes get familiar with the environment. So it is a Microsoft Office uh, program, which is to say that a lot of the techniques that you use to manipulate Microsoft Office uh, programs work in Microsoft uh, projects. So you're ahead of the game already uh, as far as that goes. And we can see that when we look at its setup. So you know, I, I guess I should put this on task because that's where it would normally be when you first come in. Now, what's different here is that I actually have a project already loaded in uh, to my interface so that you can see it a little bit more and differentiate between one part of the program and the other. But yours would just be blank, uh, but it would otherwise be laid out the way it is. And so we have a series of uh, controls or drop down uh, menus across the top which uh, affect what is being displayed in the ribbon itself. Uh, and depending on what you're doing, you're going to be using different you know, uh, parts of the ribbon to manipulate the program to support what it is that you're trying to do. So we're likely to start off in task. We'll spend a lot of time in task, but even in project where we can uh, set up the fundamental information, what's the start of the project, uh, those types of things are, are our calendars, you know, how much time a day do we work, and all those things become really important, particularly when you're first starting out on a project. Uh, and then, uh, you know, your resources, uh, both entering in your resource sheet so that you know what resources are assigned to your project, but also then attributing them to the various activities throughout your project. We're going to use both format and view routinely to affect how information is being presented. Uh, and so, you know, these are the skills or we'll get more familiar with them as we go along uh, throughout uh, the series of tutorials that we're going to do. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. And so below the ribbon, what we see is the timeline and the timeline just gives fundamental summary information about the project itself and gives you quick access to a few uh, tools. Quite often, to be fair, I often turn it off just because the one thing about projects and working on projects is they there's a whole lot of information that spreads out very quickly. And so the more space we have uh, available to us, uh, the better. And so quite often I will, in my view, decide to turn off our timeline. Uh, where is it? Right up here. Uh, and, and just to give myself a little bit more space. But I'll leave it on for now because it, it's on by default and, and we'll make those choices later on when it comes to our individual project. Below that, as default, it comes up and you're in Gantt view. Now we can change the overall view uh, to display the information contained in Microsoft Project in any number of different ways. And the way we do that is over on the left hand side where it says Gantt chart. If I right click on that, I'll bring up a menu. And these are a menu of pre-programmed views. Now I can also 
activate the view bar, which shows those views uh, in icon format. And you might want to have this uh, open or activated uh, when you're first starting to use the program because it, it, you'll learn what views are available to you. Uh, again, it takes up a little bit of space and I quite frankly am quite happy not to have it there, not distracting me. And I know that I just right click on this bar that says Gantt chart right there and I can choose between the various uh, views. You know, I can go to my resource form uh, for different resources. I can go to the resource sheet, see all of my resources in, in the project uh, and, you know, bounce around depending on what stage I'm at and what it is that I'm trying to do with my information. Now, the current view, which is the Gantt chart view, and that's the default view, uh, it's a split screen view. And you can see the split here between the sheet of information listing the various tasks on the left and the Gantt chart view itself. Now, one of the things that I've done is, you know, because I do have a project in here and I wanted to see the whole project laid out uh, left to right, and that's not always uh, true by default. You see that I've actually got it uh, zoomed uh, a little bit it is by choosing entire project, it will always show me the entire project. And so I've gone ahead and clicked that button and that becomes an important button when you kind of get lost in the details uh, of the program. So in this split view, we have a sheet view and this is currently on entry. So if I go up to the top left-hand box here, uh, it's kind of think of an Excel spreadsheet when you go up to the top left-hand uh, box and you click it, it chooses the entire sheet. Well, if I go up here and I right click, I can change what information is being presented in this sheet. You know, I can go to cost information. Uh, by default, it's on entry, and this is where I would enter the various tasks and activities that were gonna make up the project. Um, and each of these views, depending on what you choose to, to see or manipulate, have various columns and from the database that drives Microsoft Project, uh, it's populating those and we can change those. So for example, I've added the work breakdown structure uh, column uh, and uh, you know we will add costs and other things depending on what it is we wanna see at different times. It becomes a very flexible program or is a very flexible program with regards to what information is being presented to you. Um, now, other sheets that we use quite often, so we can use tracking once we're in the pro project itself, we've set our baseline and we're moving forward. We still want to start tracking things. We can use tracking. We can use variance. Now I haven't set a baseline here, so the baseline start, baseline finish are not applicable. But once we set a baseline and we start moving forward with tracking, this would be a very useful uh, view for us. So I'm just going to go back to entry. And some of the things that we see here, obviously we have the work breakdown structure, as I mentioned, uh, and that reflects the outlining that I used when I built my little project. Uh, we've assigned um, uh, durations to each of those tasks, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we do data entry and, and enter into our activities. Now they're showing as days. Uh, we could change that to weeks or hours. By, by default, you know, it's, uh, Microsoft Project basically uses as a calculation unit hours, uh, but because of the way our calendar is set up, it knows that we're working eight hours a day, Monday to Friday. And so that information uh, is interpreted. So even though I've put in days, like three days, it actually is interpreting that as 24 hours uh, for calculation purposes. And so uh, it's just something to keep in mind uh, because we are doing scheduling and I have it set to automatic scheduling for each of these activities, uh, it's able to come up with a start date and a finish date based on the predecessors that I've entered. And again, we're gonna cover all of this later. This is really just about the environment. Uh, and that's allowed it to come up with a, a schedule. Now I've moved my split view over, so I've run out of space. So if again, I go to the entire project button, I'll see the entire project laid out uh, beside me. 
Now I've made some choices as far as what, you know, to display critical tasks and Slack and things like that. And that's changing the manner in which this view, this Gantt view is uh, presented. So in the next video, when we will cover all of that, I will make some suggestions to you on good choices uh, as to how to present that information. Uh, and then I build that into a template and I save my template so that I can get the same view every time automatically. Uh, as I come into the program. And so we'll cover that in one of the, the future tutorials. Now, I guess the one of the last things I want to do is to say new tasks. So these are all auto scheduled. You can choose that. This is when I enter a new task. Is it going to by default be auto scheduled or manually scheduled? In my template, I change this because uh, what Microsoft Project offers you as a default is manually scheduled. I usually prefer them to be auto scheduled. And so I've changed my default uh, in my template itself. Uh, you know, we, we're going to go through a lot of different views. Uh, you know, so we have, for example, the network diagram uh, shown here. We can zoom it in, zoom it out. It shows the logic of all the causal dependencies, which are the predecessors in Microsoft Project terminology and show our project uh, as it goes along from start uh, to finish. Um, but we'll learn those views as we go. Uh, we're going, to, we can also come up with our own custom views. And so one of the custom views that I've used uh, effectively over the years is to split my screen uh, top to bottom and put my Gantt chart up on top and my resource graphs down below. And that allows me to deal with some of those over allocations that are going to pop up as we populate our project and to add scheduling constraints so that we can avoid uh, over allocation uh, of resources uh, beyond what we have. And so really that's most of the views, uh, you know, the, the standard buttons, you know, zooming in, zooming out, all of those things are happening. Uh, we will deal with view and format to, as we go along, but I think that's all I want to cover on this uh, tutorial, just so that you have a familiarity with what is in the program sitting in front of you uh, when you open it up. And so tune back in. I'll, get, I'll put a link here as soon as I make the video uh, to the next video, where I think I'm going to go into some of the choices that I make on how I prefer my projects to be presented. And then I build that into a template, save the template into the right spot, tell the program where to find the template so that every time I start a new project, I can get it looking uh, or presenting the information that I put in in the same way. And thus I, I can interpret it immediately when I look at the screen. So uh, hopefully you got something out of this. It, like I say, I try to keep it short and sweet, just deal with the, uh, the environment itself and uh, come on back and let's start to dig in and start to work our way through some of the challenges that uh, Microsoft Project is going to solve for us.